Hello dear students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Pooja Sharma, Assistant Professor, Khalsa College of Education, Ranjit Avenue, Amritsar. Well students, today we will study the topic Emerging Issues and Problems of Educational Administration. The objectives of this topic are to understand the emerging issues and problems of educational administration in India at primary education level, to understand the emerging issues and problems of educational administration in India at secondary education level, to understand the emerging issues and problems of educational administration in India at university education level, to understand the emerging issues and problems of educational administration in India at technical education level. Students, you must be aware that Educational policy planning is the under overall charge of the Central Ministry of Human Resource Development which includes the Department of Elementary Education, Literacy and the Department of Secondary and Higher Education. The ministry is guided by Central Advisory Board of Education which is the national level advisory body. The education ministers of all the different states are member of the board. In our country, the constitutional provision favored decentralization, yet the educational administration here is a mixture of centralization and decentralization. Hence, there is complete lack of coordination in the different sphere of education. This makes educational administration devoid of its promptness. The scenario today is that no unit of educational administration is fulfilling its obligations. We can categorize major issues and problems in educational administration according to primary education, secondary education, higher education and technical education. Let's look into administrative problems of primary education. The first problem we face at this level is related with the problem of universalization such as faulty policy of government. There is conversion of large number of existing primary schools into basic schools which has caused financially problem in implementation. Another problem is political difficulties. So far the government of India has not been able to devote their full attention towards education due to the problems of food, of hostile neighbors, the problem of linguistic state etc. Next is faulty administration of education. In most of the states, the responsibility of universal primary education is on the authorities of blocks, municipalities and educational districts. The progress of expansion of the primary education gets slow because of the indifference and incapability of these institutions. Then we have dearth of money. Income of local institutions responsible for primary education is so much limited that they are totally incapable of meeting the expenditure of compulsory education. Another is establishment of school buildings. The third and fourth All India Educational Surveys indicate that even now there are lacks of villages and habitations without schools due to non-availability of funds. And lastly, there are some natural obstacles. The village and small habitations in areas of Himalaya regions, Kashmir, Garhwal, Almora and with less population are situated distance apart. So are the desert areas in Rajasthan, the dense forest areas in Madhya Pradesh, Orissa, Assam and many southern states create problems for expected enrollment. These are very difficult areas with lack of communication, education, school organization and absence of transport. Second major problem that we face is lack of physical facilities. The most fundamental problem is lack of policy guideline for infrastructure development in schools. The children enrolled for free and compulsory education are deprived of basic necessities such as inadequate classroom, staff offices, laboratories, workshops and libraries. This situation arises because the central, state and local governments have failed to implement policy directives on the minimum standards 
in relation to school facilities. Although the Supreme Court has directed the center and state governments to provide basic infrastructure, including drinking water and toilet facilities in all the schools, still there are many schools which lack in physical facilities. Next major issue we deal with is the midday meal. Midday meal scheme was started to lure children to come to school and improve enrollment with the help of free food. Improper food preparation and unhygienic conditions has caused death of children and many of them fall ill. Other issues range from delayed payments, cooks not receiving pay and food not being delivered or being wasted. There is even embezzlement of the money by way of fake enrollments. It is also a difficult challenge to deliver food to rural areas, roads are not paved and the infrastructure is lacking. Government agencies are not doing the monitoring. They submit reports sitting at their tables without having visited schools. Caste-based discrimination continues to occur in the serving of food. The grievance redress mechanism for the complaints of midday meal scheme is not known to the parents. Another major problem is front of us is one teacher school. The job of teaching is far more complex in remotely located schools in comparison to urban schools due to poor connectivity, lack of interaction with peer group or teachers and lack of need-based training to teachers coupled with poor quality of school facilities. A large number of single teachers handle multi-grade and diverse age group children in classroom situations. Last but not the least obstacle in the way of universalization is wastage and stagnation. It is another major problem and great obstacle for universalization of elementary education. This is due to the lack of educational atmosphere, undesirable environment, lack of devoted teachers, poor economic conditions of parents, absence of proper equipment, etc. This has increased the dropout rate of student largely. Next in hierarchy come the administrative problems of secondary education. The first problem addressed herein is recruitment. Recruitment is frequently not systematic, does not draw a sufficient number of potential teachers to the profession either from the pool of secondary leavers or from the old people with relevant academic backgrounds. In response to an insufficient number of teachers and scarcity of funds, contract teachers are often hired for secondary teaching and paid through school or community fees. Such teachers have a less stable source of income, creating issues of absenteeism and retention that the schools themselves must address. Secondly, we face the problem of vocationalization. The vocational aim laid out by Indian Education Commission stands unachieved because there is lack of sufficient number of learning and training infrastructure, there is lack of experienced and qualified teacher to train students on vocational skills, the poor quality of training is not in line with industry needs, there is no clear policy or credit system for vocational education. The next big challenge we face is finance. The establishment of new secondary schools is essential for meeting the educational needs of the increasing student population. While India has continued the drive towards universal elementary education, since 2000, the share of investment financing for secondary education has declined significantly. The next problem in line is nationalistic versus private enterprises. Parents value good quality education and are willing to pay for it. Poor quality of education in poor government schools is considered as a major reason for the rapid growth in the number of private schools. In a private school, the teachers are accountable to the manager who can fire them and through him or her to the parents who can withdraw their children. In a government school, the chain of accountability is much weaker as teachers have a permanent job with salaries and promotions unrelated to performance. 
Next problem we have is lack of physical and learning resources. Due to lack of teaching and learning aids in the schools, teachers face many problems during teaching process. Some schools even do not have basic aids such as boards and books. Some schools do not have classrooms and library. There are no playgrounds for the physical development of students. This situation has created more problems for teachers as they cannot provide the students wider opportunities for learning and development. In these conditions, teachers fail to create meaningful learning environment in schools. Next problem is lack of supervision. It has been found that there is a poor concept of supervision in our schools. In our country, the process of supervision is characterized with the notion of inspection. Supervisors create fear during the process of supervision in the minds of teachers. The supervisor behave like kings and treat the teachers like slaves. This trend has created mistrust and discouragement among the teachers. The supervisors, instead of providing constructive feedback, give order to the teachers and hence no improvement takes place. Last problem at this level is lack of coordination. The problem of coordination has taken roots due to weak communication between policymakers, staff, parents and the community. Teachers remain at the receiving end in all areas, be it making of curriculum or any other policy. The teacher participate only in the implementation, not in the developmental part. There is even lack of condition between teachers and principals, which has stopped discussion on mutual problems faced by teachers in schools. Now, we will talk about administrative problems of university education. The main problem in some of our university is those of autonomy and inclusion of pol policies. This largely affect the effective functioning of higher education institutes. The university have direct relation with chancellor and legislature, but ministers also poke their nose in some matters. Since university enjoy legal positions, political interest in them become inevitable. The next problem we face is related to admission. Higher education is very costly affair. Due to poor economic conditions of the country, it is not possible to provide higher education to all. There are no definite admission rules, inadequate provision for enabling talented but economical weaker students to continue their studies on a whole time basis unsatisfactory provisions for encouraging self-study, no restriction in the establishment of new institution, careless planning and distance location, new institution, non-adoption of the policy of admission on the basis of merit in the view of weaker sections. Another challenge after this is addressing underrest among the students. The bulk of the students are interested only in acquiring the label of a degree for getting higher social status in the society after spending a stipulated period. In order to improve the living and working condition of the students' community, UGC has been giving financial assistance for the construction of suitable residential halls, non-resident student center, health centers, hobby workshop, etc. Yet, it is most unfortunate the student in discipline has been increasing in volume. Sometimes the ugly incident and outburst of the student frenzy disturb the academic atmosphere of the universities and cause grave concern to educationalists, parents and other interested in student welfare. Our next problem is concerned with standard of affiliated colleges on which the standard of higher education ultimately depend. Any program for the improvement of higher education, therefore, will have to concentrate on the affiliated colleges. The problem of affiliation received some attention in the five-year plan by UGC, but it is very little as compared to its magnitude. The quality of education of these colleges is inadequate due to the improper planning and location of affiliated colleges. No improvement in existing system of affiliation and no revision of the system grants in aid of the state governments. 
students participation in different administrative bodies of the university is another major concern at this level. Political corruption has polluted the source of power and authorities and consequently the quality of decisions taken by concerned authorities have been adversely affected. Many groups of the students influenced by political parties are bound to create problems for administrations. Some of the students use this occasion to criticize others based on their personal biases. Due to this, the universities have become advertisers for certain brand of politics within the campus, influence students through the meeting and campaigns. The alarming increase in the rate of unemployment among educated persons is another issue of concern. Now the question arises, fear to accommodate this influx of educated persons that stream out from universities all over the country. If properly harnessed, the manpower should prove to be an asset and not a liability. Persons at the helm of affairs must pay considerable attention to this aspect of the problem. No serious attempt has so far been made to relate education to manpower planning, although this is one of the recommendation of Kothari Commission. Next, the issue of finance is a huge challenge. Declining public expenditure in the education sector, increasing cost per student without the support from credit markets and dominance of private sector in higher education worsen the problems of finance in higher education. While on one hand, we argue that government of India should pay a pivotal role in financing higher education, on the other hand, heavy public subsidization of higher education could lead to unequal distribution of welfare since public expenditure on higher education is made out of general taxes. Let's move on to administrative problems of technical education. The foremost problem of the current technical and vocational education environment is its fragmentation and the uncoordinated management and administration of each subsystem, that is, government, industry, and educational institution. There is lack of an institutional framework to organize, articulate, integrate, regulate, and ensure the quality of training, interventions, and programs. Shortage of institution is the second major problem at this level. On a few institutions impart technical education and the existing number fails to cope with the needs of the increasing populations. There is need for its constant expansions and improvement. For this cooperation, the state and central government is of great importance. The next problem that comes up is the poor technical knowledge of administrators. The administrators are responsible for industrialization, but their lack of knowledge of technical engineering subjects does not allow them to succeed in achieving the targets of industrialization. The government and directorate of technical education can solve this administrative difficulty. In the part of lesson, we will discuss general problems of educational administration. Due to limitation of state machinery, in some state there are separate posts of director of primary education and director of secondary education, but in other there is only one post. Various suggestions we were given to secondary education commission and Kothari commission to solve such problems, but not concrete step have been taken in these directions. The division of constitutional provision is theoretical and ambiguous. Even after the division, the three units, central government, state government, local government are interdependent. There is no clarity of their programs. There is indifference in the implementation of plans concerning the educational development and expansion and regarding stating of various programs. There exists lack of cooperation amongst them, which has created many obstacles in the educational organization. Vested interest of private management is a major problem. India is presently suffering from the problem of scarcity of resources and artificial scarcity created by affluent and powerful persons to fulfill their vested interest. 
the failure of people connected with the management of the schools and their vested interest is affecting the teachers as well as increasing educational expenditure which affects the students. Another common problem encountered at this level is insufficient sense of responsibility shown by authorities. District inspectors are more active to their rights connected with their post and their administrative powers than to their responsibilities. Hence, they fail to behave properly with their subordinates and other capable and experienced person. They do not get necessarily help and cooperation from them. Their subordinate officers and employees also lack sincerity and proper behavior. The attitude of educational officers is authoritative and critical instead of cooperative and helpful in matter of inspection of schools and its problems. So, they do not help in solving problems. Next problem that we have is of coordination. The Indian central government intend to shift the burden on state government on the pretext of constitutional provisions. The agencies of cooperation or contact among the state government through which uniformity can be maintained are less effective. Though after the establishment of regulatory bodies like UGC and different boards of education, many of such problems have been solved. Still, the problem of coordination has not been uprooted. Another problem at this level is caused by inhumaneness of Indian authorities. Educational administration envisages a different kind of method and rules from that of general administration. But in our country, same kind of rules are being used for all the system without paying any attention to its practical aspect. Any officer of Indian civil service is sent to education ministry or education department. Next, we have deep-rooted problem of red tapism. Educational programs need to keep changing with the changing demands of the society. The present education system suffer from red tapism. The money censured in various plans were never utilized fully. Many important programs remained and closed in the departmental files at one stage or other and finally the money was either spent on some other work or returned as such. Problems in educational administration stem from lack of leadership. School administration officials are usually former teachers or principal who have worked hard to qualify for their positions and have many years of experience. But experience does not necessarily qualify one to be leader. Educational administrator must adhere to policies even if they do not personally agree with them. Good leaders work without sacrificing the integrity of the system. Another problem arises at administrative level when administrators do not have regular and open lines of communication with their teaching staff or with their superiors. Because of overwhelming responsibilities, principals tend to become less accessible, which leads to less face-to-face -face interaction, which is important for the teachers and the students. Instead, Issues usually are addressed in general meetings because of time constraints. The teacher-student relationship is a close one that can be nurtured by everyday interaction. A disconnect can result into major problems when a dialogue between teachers, principal and district leaders is not maintained. This causes resentfulness on the part of teachers who perceive a lack of concern on the part of their superior when the teacher feel indignant their performance suffer along with the lower student achievement. A major problem can occur in schools when certain teachers, parents or community leaders are shown favoritism based on their degree of influences or relationship with administrators. An effective administrator will make decision based upon which is deemed to be best for the students and will stand firm in her positions and as advocate for children. In schools that have elected leaders and school boards, competition and fierce ambition can cause a problem when these concerns override the main purpose of education. The principals who prefer one candidate over another may try to persuade teachers to be like-minded. Some candidates may use low test scores and high dropout rates as weapon to force 
front leaders out of their positions, thereby casting the district into a negative light. If communities do not see their educational leaders as a people of integrity, the motivation of participation in school improvement projects is diminished, thereby negatively affecting the future of children's education. That is all about the details of the topic. Now, looking back, we may see that this module discussed about the emerging problems of educational administration at various levels. Educational institutions are the preparation grounds for the progress of a nation. Educational administration is responsible for the development and expansion of different educational systems and to keep track of the changing demands of the society. Proper regulation and channelization can increase the utility of education for public. The various administrative problems at different levels of education need immediate attention. The appointments at important posts of education department should be according to the qualification of people. Every education officer appointed should have ability of preparing budget, planning and guidance, organization, reporting, administration and coordination. Thank you.